Okay. Uh, I'd like to call a meeting order. Know this meeting was properly posted Friday, May 5th, 2017. Item 3 is discussion of possible action to approve the minutes from the regular meeting on 4 24 17. Second. Uh, motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Let's jump down to uh, item number. Six is the lease. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Five is the transfer. Six is the lease. And then seven is kind of a general catch all uh, regarding the shelter. So, um, we can do six. That's okay. We can do So, one for Matthew. One for you. Dredge and Randy. Extras for DHS. Yeah, Jack sent an email saying he couldn't come, but he can. Yeah, I'm, I'm John Paper. I'm here in the second check. You are? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. 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 I did get I got you. Yeah. All in favor of receiving the document. Okay. Aye. 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 Okay, so the document has been properly received. <laughs> All right, so this is not the prettiest document in the world. Um, it's been through several iterations and versions going back and forth between DHS, perhaps Sarah, Gretchen, me. And so last time we met, uh, there were some things that the committee voted to include. I attempted to get those done. And looking at it with Gretchen, she found some things that I think DHS had stricken out that the committee we hadn't, and we attempted to get those back in. And then there was some additional language um, as I was reviewing it that I, I put into consideration. Um, and so that is the reason I wanted to bring it back to the committee so we could get one look at it in what I hope is at least a form that's good enough to send to DHS. Um, so, Gretchen, do you want to, is there anything you want to say with regard to what you had found and sure. we put back in? Yeah, um, the version that everyone looked at the last meeting didn't have all the strikeout in addition. I didn't realize it until we started really looking over the lease. But um, the paragraph under term rent repair and maintenance, um, some language regarding renewal of the lease on an annual basis has been stricken, but it's critical that it comes back in, especially now that it's contemplated that the county would have to pay some overages. The county cannot create a debt. And entering into a 25-year lease with potential overages has potentially created an enormous debt. So the county has to be able to review it on an annual basis, and if there are going to be additional costs, it has to have the ability to um, budget and encumber those funds. So um, we put the language back in about a renewal of the lease on a fiscal year basis, and. Um, We additionally added some language that we thought that we needed it's in the same paragraph. It's about the yellow part that's stricken out and highlighted, and that um, it protects the county that if in the event that we can't obtain complete funding for the renovation, the lease will avoid. We don't want to enter into a lease for something that can't be funded and completed. Um, and it's also, um, it had been in the lease, but I highlighted it in green just so everybody could see it. Uh, under improvements under the third page, it says that the county is not responsible for the constant improvements contemplated by the repurposing. Um, but we're, I'm sorry, count the words again. Third page, green. For point of clarification, so it's, the green, the most recently added language? That I just highlighted so everybody observed it and saw it. I just wanted it to be known. 
the, the addition on the first page. Is in red. Is there some in red or some in blue or some in green? It kind of depends on the author. And Randy, most of the stuff that I put in, I I, I tended to do the uh, the strikeouts and then the underlining of the language, like they would do at the legislature. So that would be that helps me out. Thank you. Also on the uh, maintenance and repair list, the version that the committee looked at um, last meeting didn't have a reference to the elevators, so that has to be added in. The consumer price index was thoroughly discussed last meeting. That's all added in um, on the second page, um, as well as on the third. DHS needs to look at some of these provisions. Then we want to talk about that. Yeah. Okay. So, as we discussed last time, um, DHS is capped amount what they say they can do is 160 per year. We talked about a, the initial five year period would be 160. The county, if this lease were approved, would then uh, be on the hook for any amount potentially above that. So you'll see there it's, it talks about the initial five year period shall not exceed the 160. Beginning in year six through the time of the lease, uh, we would go off the consumer price index. However, there would be no increase less than 3%. So a floor of 3% increase in DHS is cap amount each year after the beginning of the sixth year. Then also uh, in order for us to try to have a good understanding of where we're at financially, um, DHS would report to the county, to the board, monthly where they're at with regard to their cap amount. So in the first five years with regard to the 160, going forward, whatever that cap amount is based on CPI or 3%. Um, then also, as I was looking at this lease, um, if DHS hit the cap amount at any point in time, and then the county could not contribute funds, it, it would essentially wipe this lease out and it would be null and void and could potentially lead to the, the shelter ceasing operation. So I put in some language that in the event the county did not have the funding, um, DHS could elect to go above their cap amount in order to maintain the lease and continue operations and that's that notwithstanding paragraph. Um, other than that, oh, and then the liability language that we talked about has, has been inserted. So other than that, I believe that covers all of the changes back to where we were originally. Um, um, Cody and I had a conversation. Um, I don't know if you want to discuss it or not, but it goes to the difficulties for the county to budget according to these lease terms. Um, and it could be potentially perilous. Do you want to talk about it, Cody, or are you okay? No, I mean, if you guys want to talk about it, you can, but I mean, I've, You explain it I, very I well. That's why I'm looking at you. So. You explain it better than I do. Well, I'll speak to it. And Mr. Budget. Essentially, essentially, if the county is contemplating spending any funds on the shelter, we would, at the beginning of the fiscal year, have to set some kind of money aside in order to cover any potential cost above the 160. And the difficulty is not knowing what that would be, where does that money come from, et cetera. So that that is that is a potential peril that the county would face right right off the bat. Well, okay, how much do we need? What do we need to set aside, et cetera? Especially if there's an unanticipated breakdown, <coughs> mechanical breakdown, which we seem to suffer well. So that that is something that going forward, um, the budget board, BT, the budget board, and the commissioners would need to be 
uh, aware of. Let me ask you something, Mr. Chairman. So the the three percent again is just what could be the maximum amount that DHS is liable for. The minimum. Year six would be forty eight hundred. Year seven it would be forty nine. Well, no, one six one sixty is the max at the first. The first. Five. Five years, mm -hmm. and then we increase it by three percent. A minimum of three percent each right. year going forward, and then unless and CPI is higher than three percent, higher. it would be whatever the actual CPI is. CPI or three percent, whatever is higher, yes, right, applies to the one sixty. But that's their max potential liability, and then the county is responsible for anything about that. Well, it would be applied to the base amount right. going forward. So the in the what sixty would be. 4800 more, so yeah, 164800, and then three percent the next year going forward. Yeah. But yes, yeah. you're saying is if it goes to 165, well, I'll go for 200 bucks. Their expenses for the year, correct? That's what you're asking about. Now, I'm just again trying to distinguish where the line is so that DHS knows. They know, what, they know what the line is. It's in the formula that's right here in the lease. They know what the line is each year going forward. The people that don't know what the line is would be us. I get it. This is a consensus link comment? Sure. I like my comment. Uh, there's a provision here that was added in green on the first page, and it says, in the event full and complete third-party funding is not obtained to complete cost to renovation the agreements, this lease is no point. Mike Joseph, I'm with Mackie and Tap, and we represent the donor, our Knoll Family Foundation. So would that mean that we put up a million and a half dollars, and they work on the construction, they spend all our money and renovate the building, and then they're short a little bit of money. The county could declare the lease null and void, and we've lost our million and a half dollars, and we don't get a refund of any of that? Because we don't find that acceptable, and we would not, we would not be willing to provide the funds on that basis. All right. Um, Stacy can address the risk involved with putting this project out for bid and the risk that it would go over budget. He explains that very, very well. Um, but it was proposed to the county in the offset, in the initial presentation, that this would be at no cost to the county. Um, we have identified some additional costs that weren't brought to light initially. And um, Sarah has worked very diligently to um, obtain additional funding to ensure that the project does not tank. But there is an inherent risk here to the county. Can you explain what that would be, Steve? Well, as we move forward and you get a contractor on board and you're working as a million five, if the bid's two million dollars, just don't award it. Do you get a guaranteed contract? We, and we can get a guaranteed contract. Of course, with the maximum guaranteed price, there could still be change orders on unforeseen conditions and things like that. But, so the risk is, is not great because we've always got some control or some way out of the contract where you don't spend a million and a half and that sort of thing. But, uh, at the end of the day, you don't know what you don't know about that project. We don't know what we don't know. And Lori Blumenthal's here, and she's putting up half a million dollars for the roof, and we're putting up a million and a half. So I guess the county is saying that we take the risk of putting up all the money. And it's not just an option to terminate. It becomes null and void. That's a, a drastic remedy instead of an option to terminate. And there's no process for possibly raising other funds or, or doing some other, taking some other alternative. It's just the lease becomes null and void. No action is taken. So the donors, the two major donors, lose all their money, and the county benefits through a complete renovation of a building, and, and we've just given this money, and it's not used for any, any purpose at all that, that carries out the mission that we intended to carry out. So I'm really concerned about that. And 
I'm not sure we would, we would be willing, our Knoll Family Foundation would be willing to put up well, the money. I don't know if you would either, would you? I'll do whatever you recommend. Well, I don't think that's too many dollars. I don't think we would do that on this basis. Well, yeah, the risk is very small of there being overruns above that because we do have controls in place as we go through the different contracts. Well, if they're small, then we should take this out. But there is still a risk of, of some unfunded money at the end just to finish the project. And I guess the question has always become, say it's $50,000, who pays the last $50,000? But I think a much reason, more reasonable what Mr. Joseph is saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, so I don't want to yeah. misrepresent you, is that we've gone with the most drastic remedy, yeah. and that is that the entire contract is declared null and void, whereas something like an option to terminate or some sort of process to go through that then there will be a 90-day period to look for additional funds or funding mechanisms or something like that. And then upon written notice, there's the option to turn. I mean, something like that. So it shows that the parties are going to work in good faith to come up with that additional $50,000 or whatever it is instead of just saying, Shh, this is no good. Is that yeah, and Thank you. I think that would be good, and, and there ought to be. I mean, the donor is concerned here because we ought, we can't control the expenses or the change orders. So if change orders occur, we at the risk of the county and DHS for approving change orders at our risk now, and putting up this money and possibly losing the entire amount of this grant for both of the donors. So we're we're yeah. stuck. We do approve the change orders, but what we would do first is try to cut some stuff out of the project. And, and how do we don't get paint that wall? Right. We need some assurance that this it'll stay within budget. <coughs> if if places, can I interject something here? Because and, and I'm the chief architect for DHS would be the architect of record if we can reach an agreement on this lease. Uh, I've been pushing for construction management uh, processes since we've started this, and it kind of sounds like we're, we're, we're leaning back towards a hard bid where you, you do have a lot of unknowns until bid day. With a construction management process, we tell the contractor, we get him on board early. We tell him what our budget is, and we design to that budget and we designed that budget with a contingency since we're in an existing building. There's going to be some unforeseen conditions in that building. We designed to our budget with a contingency left that would cover a reasonable amount of change orders. And that, I think, is how we ensure that this project go forward, that your, your, your clients do not fund, you know, Throw two million dollars at a project that, that is is not used as intended. I might suggest this as part of that process. And uh, I know that this group is, you know, the official body that oversees the public improvements and the contracting process. But since that that is a possibility of an uh, oversight or some management, maybe there could be some uh, some public private body that oversees some of this. We've been presented from the very beginning with a proposal that was a public-private partnership. And now is the first time I'm attending this meeting, and we've had Sarah involved and Lori's been involved. And okay. Been let, me, let, me, let me say a couple of things. First of all, unless I'm mistaken, this language that talks about no and void has been in this contract and this lease quite a while. Is that correct? No, no. It is. It's it's right. it's so but, but, but let me tell you but, what but, my, my thought process Hold on one second, Chris. Let me, let me finish. And then back to the construction management, we've talked about that several times. Stacy has indicated that he is a fan of that and that that would be his preference going forward. Even with that, there are no guarantees, and you know that. So now, Gretchen. The way I was thinking, and perhaps it was not well drafted, is that what we contemplated was three agreements working together and being approved together and all hinge on each other. The lease, the donor agreement, and now the most recent donor agreement. All have to be approved simultaneously because one fails, the whole thing fails. In the event, the donor agreement contemplates that there's a lease in place with DHS. But the donor has the option to transfer the funds 
I think the, with the RNL, it's initially a, a smaller sum up front to get an engineer on board. And then when the bids come in, so she knows what we're looking at, so give her assurance that it's her cost, and then her money's going to be well spent. She will see the second dollar amount, and then she will transfer those funds. What I was contemplating is, is if we don't receive those funds, we don't want to enter, in, enter into a lease with DHS. That's what I'm thinking of. I, I'm, I, I am pretty well assured from all the conversations we have had around this table that if the project is coming along and somehow some amount is short, I would fall out of my chair if Sarah didn't jump up and say, I can fix this, I'll, I'll help you. Or somebody at the county said, oh my gosh, we'll jump to the plate because it's incredibly futile to expend all the time, energy, and money to get to the point where you're just a couple thousand dollars short. That's my gut feeling. But what I don't want is it's now become a multiple party project. The generosity of the Blumenthal, the Arnell, the DHS coming on board. It's just keep it all together because if one falls apart, the whole thing topples down like a house card. That's what I was contemplating. If you can think of better language, Question, maybe instead of complete the cost of the renovation, uh, full and complete third party funding is not obtained as contemplated. Well, it's not received. Uh, or third party funding is not received. It's not received as contemplated uh, under, I mean, because we're tying in three agreements as contemplated under the project for well how about this in the event fully complete third party funding is not received per donor agreement this place is null and void why, why is it null and void for the an option terminated well you could do that if I the party given an option to terminate But then again, the option to terminate, I think there needs to be a process of discussion. It, and, it, and at least, I mean, not an unreasonable amount of time, not necessarily 180 days, but maybe 90 days. And so during that notification period, you know, there's time to work on addressing whatever the issue might be. I don't know, maybe it needs to be 120, 180 to the way that we've, we've worked. It might need to be 365, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but but some sort of process. Well, I remind you, uh, the way we work, I think we've all tried to work. It's not an easy process. We're all trying to do our best for everyone involved. And <coughs> I agree. Oh, I agree. I get back on my soapbox and go back to the head DHS just accepted the terms that they're previously uh, they're operating under today. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was not my intent. It's just that everybody's worked diligently. It works. It's a, well, I, I understand. No, it's a slow grind. That's all. Lisa Davis, District Judge, Oklahoma County, Presiding Judge of a Juvenile. And I'm the one that made the initial representations probably a year ago to the Board of County Commissioners with Dr. Shropshire about what the vision was for the building. And, uh, we had a lot of community involvement in that vision. Uh, I thought the hard part would be raising the money. Uh, <laughs> that was the easy part, apparently. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I see a lot of this discussion that we've just had ties into this discussion about what happens in five years from now. Um, my vision is the first two years this building's going to be under remodel. Probably DHS is going to have to spend 160000 because it's going to be in construction. The next two or three years, hopefully with the new HVAC and roof and not everything fixed, we're not going to have a whole lot of major expenditures. If after five years some major expenditures comes along, I would uh, strongly think that we would do what we did this time and that we would go to the community and look for the money and we would not be looking at either the county or DHS for another major expenditure seven, eight, ten years down the road. That's what we did this time. That's what the representation I made. We, we held true to that. Uh, we've now expanded it to two million, but we still held true that we don't anticipate the county 
for DHS other than manpower having to put money into this building. And we'll have a great facility that will serve Oklahoma County families and children. And we're already doing it across the street at the Chesapeake building. It, you know, it's, it's, if anybody has the time to come to it's amazing. You need to come see it. It's, we've got uh, almost 20 families and 50 children that are already being served in this family resilience. With that in mind, would it be all right if I propose something? Certainly. Okay. I, I wanted to propose this. There, there have been some difficulties in this budget. It's gone on for a couple of years, and I know there have been some difficulties in dealing between the county and DHS and, and some negotiations on this lease. I'm thinking maybe there could be a different way to handle some of this. I think you all have done a good job. They have. Everyone's trying to move forward with it. And maybe there could be an alternative. We were proposed, uh, we were given this proposal as a public-private partnership, as I mentioned earlier, and I'm thinking there could be a way to continue it with a different body. You're still in charge of this. It would be, it, it's your project that you oversee. But maybe you could appoint a, a community advisory board it could be a recommending body that includes representatives of the county, representatives of DHS, and representatives of the community, which would include representatives of our Knoll Family Foundation, Lord Blumenthal, court system, maybe some of the stakeholders that are involved. And that group would be a recommending body, an advisory body to you. Uh, they would be the stakeholders that are involved. It provides for a continuing public-private partnership, which has been the case all along. Uh, brings a lot of people together to help make some decisions that take them off your hands. They would be advisory to you only. It's not subject to the Open Meetings and Open Meetings Act, so they could meet regularly and get things done. Uh, it's only an advisory and recommending body, it's not a decision making body. Uh, the group could meet with the architect as the project moves along to oversee some of this. The group could also be involved in some fundraising activities and monitor the progress of the work. Uh, and again, it's just an advisory body. They're not subject to your fixed schedule. Uh, I could do all sorts of things, and I was thinking that maybe Judge Lisa Davis would chair that committee. She's chaired the committee before. She would be a good person to continue it. And it might be a good alternative to bring the parties together to help move this along and it could meet as, as needed, not on a fixed schedule. And again, it, you retain full control over it. It allows the group to kind of come together and reach a consensus to make recommendations to you and then you can make your decisions based on those, the decisions of the group. And again, it puts together a public-private partnership that was uh, originally intended by the sole process. And I don't know what you think of that. Well, so. Mr. Joseph, I was going to say great things think alike, because that's what I pitched a year ago. <laughs> but um, I didn't go very far. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm, I just want to see the building redone. <laughs> that's the same thing here. We're looking to fulfill a mission and make sure this can move forward and it takes us off your hands some of the, the dealings and maybe it allows the parties to come together and achieve a consensus in a private setting uh, and helps people to move this along. Well, that's not an agenda item. Well, I would suggest you make it an agenda item if you can. It's an emergency matter, but that's up to you. Yeah, I don't have your. It's up to you. That's your. Uh, if I may, I, can I back up a little bit? Uh, I know that there was an issue possibly with the renewal uh, and potential mutual approval with DHS. Is it? Yeah, I'll just tell you, I'm, I'm going to name Trump Peter from with DHS Legal Zone for Jackie Lai, and and one of the first the first thing he told me when I when he told me to fill in for him was. Um, the DHS can't agree to any kind of basically opt-out clause for the county as far as the county being able to back out every year. Um, and which is how I read that. Well, that that's condition. the same language as was in the prior meeting. They said it's, they think DHS had the sole option. No, I don't the prior. Yeah, it's just the same language as was in the prior. That's why things ought to be resolved in some other manner. And if I may, I, in question, I, I don't know if this is workable. I, uh, I had mentioned possibly putting a qualifier in there that that is um, mutual approval. Um, if, if there's a funding issue or, or something to that extent, maybe approval uh, will be withheld in the event of. Um, that's their funding issue. Okay. 
Let's let's take a run at this, and I'm no lawyer, so y'all shoot me if this is not good. So to try to get to what Randy's talking about with Nolan Boyd. So in the event full and complete third party funding is not received as contemplated per the donor agreement, the donors and or DHS shall have 120 days in which to identify and transfer funds for the completion of the project to the county. In the event the funds are not transferred within the 120 day window, the lease is null and void. I'm throwing you guys an olive branch, I'm throwing you something, somebody offers something other than we're going to create more bureaucracy. Otherwise, the, Mr. Chairman, would that um, language contemplate the county providing any funds for the completion of the renovations? Because as written, it sounds like it would be funds that would have to be transferred to well, the county. That, as written, I, I can see, yes, that that's the way it is. When we can put funds, you want to take out donor and DHS, but again, this was presented as a no cost to the county project. So, right, and it, so I, I think that if, and again, I don't recall all of the language, but I uh, would probably recommend amending the language that says that it has to be transferred to the county and just something about, you know, funds identified. Um, and then, again, say instead of null and void, uh, then the contract would be terminated just leave it at that because again you have this uh, essentially condition that would have to be met that hasn't been met but maybe. and you could put and you could be maybe, maybe terminated, terminated because it could be something that you know maybe it can't be addressed right now to open up and I don't know about you know what has to happen to get a CO and maybe it can be deferred maintenance until year two or three uh, again there's there's so many unknowns and, and I, I mean I'm I'm trying to offer a way forward here, and so. Uh, and I appreciate that. And we're having to uh, amend on the the fly and draft by a committee, and which I know we want to try and move this forward. I, I don't know to what extent DHS or other stakeholders want time to review and propose language, because I mean, again, we're. Uh, or we can hammer it all out here if we have all the, the if we can do it here then let's do it here. Again, is, is it legal to do something like Mr. Joseph has suggested with this contract where there's 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 interested people from each party to get together, hammer out the language of the contract and submit it for the this this committee's approval. Um, we're here, let's get it done. Yeah. It, the chair. Renee has her hand up. I don't know. I, if I had a question because it seems to me initially when we started Gretchen, did you and DHS are trying to meet together and I mean all this no. For some reason I was thinking that I just understand that DHS hadn't seen this language, so I'm curious if that's not a good idea is to have all the attorneys sit down together for and, and just the attorney sit down, come up with the language that they bring back to this committee to decide whether to approve and take the DHS because if we do something here that DHS isn't even going to be able to agree to, we're back right back where we were a year ago. And I know everybody's trying hard and that's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to find a way forward and again I don't think when the attorneys mean that that's subject to the open records act, we're not making a decision, but if everybody can sit down and look at the contract together, I mean the same attorneys that are in the room currently. Well, but that doesn't have the attorney right here that hasn't seen the contract, that hasn't seen what you're suggesting. How can you how, how can you go forward with that without some direction or having seen it until now? With all this group that everybody's trying to put their input, it needs to be one person from each group that's doing that. Otherwise, it gets too crazy. And I'm saying that as an attorney. So yeah, I understand. <laughs> Well, just on that, 
note to pose a question to council. I mean, is that a, is that even a possibility for us to have the attorneys um, negotiate terms that are then presented to the board? I mean, to the to the committee that can then be recommended to the board. Well, Randy, um, the reason that it came back this this meeting was because we realized so many terms weren't open and completely presented to the committee as a whole that I think the chairman thought it was only fair that everyone know other than delegating it to me to refining it and fixing it up and thus not meeting what the, what the committee had been initially presented. It, was, it became too modified for the fair enough. So what? So I mean, he, he, it was just to make it very clear what, what the terms were, what the terms were being con contemplated. Yes, it could have been done with me and DHS, and it could be a brand new agreement. But that's not what the purpose of the committee was. And that's it why it wasn't done that done way. Done that way, and it could be that someone on this body or DHS objects even after the lawyers have looked at it. And that and that makes sense. So if I. If, my proposal, Mr. Chairman, is just for the sake of um, maybe organization instead of us spitballing all of these ideas, which are, are great ideas, uh, should we just start page one and the first change and, and go through page by page, paragraph by paragraph, and, and negotiate terms? All right. Um, so my understanding is that the county is saying that they have to have the red language that's in the paragraph term rent repair and maintenance. Who doesn't have a copy that needs one? Because we can. I think maybe does come up to the table. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that would be helpful. And I'll just say too, I can't officially, you know, consent to anything. I have to go back to our executive team and make sure they can off on it. But I know our general position on some key issues. I can. See what they'll probably say. And you didn't get a copy of this prior to the guy, right? No, well, this is the first. This is the first ever day we've seen this. All this language. Okay. Nobody on any of our side. I, th I think that's fine. And what we do is we get a. a I mean, the purpose is we get a, an amended lease that we can recommend to the Board of County Commissioners. True. Um, but I'm saying that, that what we're doing right now, the purpose. And if DHS comes back and says we can't do that, at that point it is at the level with the decision makers. I mean, all we can do is recommend to the Board of County Commissioners, and they can make a decision then if they're going to amend on DHS's terms or not. I think if you would, I, and please forgive me. Uh, John Pettiford. John. Yeah. Uh, Jack, I spoke with Jack, and he said that, that you had been given um, general direction in, in boundaries. And but, one but, being, and, and when I spoke to you, Jack, he said not a mutual um, opt out, but possibly a qualifier. We could craft some sort of qualifier that that would be workable. So, how can you legally do that? Don't you have to encumber your money every year? If you don't have an opt out, you would have to encumber potentially $160,000 times 25. Yes, we have to have an opt out. Is that what you're asking? Uh, so do we. Right, that's, I, I agree. I mean, that's kind of a promise. Yeah. Yeah. So, is this is this sentence acceptable to everybody? I mean, everybody does this. Uh, the universities do it. State agencies do it. And if, uh, from my standpoint, if businesses see that it's terminated and we put up all this money, we'll never do business with the county or DHS again. And business information will flow to everybody. If nobody do business with you. Same thing happens with universities and with Indian tribes and everybody. So, most of the time, people will renew or find some other solution. But that ought to be acceptable. Right? Well, the way Jack expected to express it to me was basically just that that DHS can't agree. I guess because of the, moving the kids there and the money they're having to put up front. That, that what if they? What if you had to it. give notice 90 days before the before July 1, 90 days in advance? Well, I think what might actually work, the way I understood from Jack, was that if there was that there was some clarification on why the county would have to pull pull out. I mean, for some okay, if it was limited, if it was limited, if it was limited for to financial purposes, for budgeting, and gave 90 days, so it's not just any reason. I mean, have you ever seen finding standard clause? 
responsibility. Even if we did, it's not legal. Right. Okay. Tying it to the fiscal responsibility. Yeah, but this doesn't decide that. That's what I'm talking about with the qualifier. Is that possible? Yeah. Okay. That's pretty standard language in every state contract, is that it's a fiscal obligation, and if they're the second object, it's tied to the fiscal obligation. And by that, Your Honor, you mean upon availability of funds? That's not language. For the next year and the next year, yeah, because neither the state nor the county can tie up money past the next year. So, I mean, this just doesn't, I mean, the, the intent may be to tie it to fiscal, but it doesn't say that. So what's the proposed term? Yeah, I mean, this is the county's language. I, I don't have a problem with this, but the, if the state has a problem with it, then we need, uh, you know, the state's language that's acceptable to them and might be acceptable to us. Okay, Joe, you want to not have any of the Yeah. 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 Which I think, again, yeah. it's just a part of the county. Yeah. Not, and not directly tied to it. Is it John? Yeah. 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 This is the language in the current group. Okay, thank you. That would be. Thank you for that. Paragraph six. I need a smart. I tell you what. I need a smart. I kind of like something you said earlier, Randy. Let's just put it in the hands of the Is there a motion to approve this draft? There is. It's mine. To recommend this to the commission. The only thing is, it's my understanding that DHS won't be able to approve. Oh, I'm just trying to get it to the decision makers. Can we work on a potential, a potential revision of, of this clause or this sentence tying it to the fiscal obligation before approval? I'm, I'm free to let, I'm willing to let them do what they want to do. I think mean, if you leave the sentence on null and void, the donors are not going to go forward with it. <sighs> Again, all I'm trying to do is, all I've heard is complaints about getting off high center. I think we've tried to do that. I'm trying to send something up to the decision makers, and DHS and the donors can then hash this out. Actually, we can send them two versions. We can send them the version that we have previously voted to recommend, and then DHS came back and said, we can't do that, and we tried to work with them. So we could send that version and we could send this version. So I guess my motion dies for like a second. Multiple sentences. Okay. Correct. Are we still are we talking about the null and void language? Yes. So now we're on the uh, renewal renewal of this lease that will only come into being upon the mutual approval. I think that's where we are right now. Right. 
Right. Well, that's, that's really repeated that the parties agree to give notice in writing not to intend to continue within 30 days for engine 30. So we have that. So, I mean, okay. I think the question is what's the objection of the state then? It, because whatever's written in the current agreement is in the proposed language that we have today, is it not? Yes, my thought is though, reading the, reading the two provisions and reading the two sentences together potentially changes the, I think, interpretation of the renewal, right? So instead of necessarily um, a straight kind of termination opt-out here, you have that the lessee has the right to terminate, but the parties have to uh, have to renew the lease every year. That kind of explains the process. Versus here, it's read as essentially both parties have the um, have a right to opt out. Let's give the lessees the. I mean, it's, it's semantics essentially. I mean, if the, if the lessees need that right, let's give the lessees that right. Because again, if they <laughs> if they say they're leaving, then okay, we've got our building then. Where where it says the the party mm -hmm. or in the in no event may let you terminate this amended lease. Which part are you referring to? The parties agree to give notice. Agree to give notice in writing. Right. To the intention to continue. All right. And what I'm what I'm hearing is that the state objects to the parties because then that would give the county the right to kick them out. I think it's being read as as a dual termination or mutual termination versus I think in the original lease it's read more as a process that th that it has to be approved every year. Right. Well, and that it has to be approved every year as part of the process that indicates that there's a possibility that it won't be approved every right. year. So it's the same thing. It's what uh, Mr. Rob said. It's very interesting. I mean, we're right. Like so, so let's go with the uh, existing lease. Uh, that lease? Mm -hmm. Randy, that lease sucks. It is the most poorly written lease I have ever read. There's no way. I tried to clarify the terms in the existing lease. It is, that lease led to disputes over maintenance 10 years ago. No. Oh, and I'm not talking about maintenance terms. I'm I know, I'm just saying it's a poorly written lease. And, and it may and be. And I object to the language of that. It, it needs to be. Which is indicated by your perception of what the current language means Correct. in the current lease versus what the county's perception of what the current language means in the current lease, thus taking out any ambiguity in the new lease is going to serve all parties involved. Can I offer up again just Davis's point that we possibly tie the mutual um, opt-out to a fiscal obligation? I think that might be um, agreeable but sir, to the donor. if we did that, you'd be asking us to tie that to an unknown fiscal obligation for 25 years, but, right? I mean, you guys are your DHS wants 160 cap. We've been gracious enough, at least, to contemplate that for them. We don't know what potentially the county liability is going forward in a year. So you, you'd ask us to telling you we can't fiscally do it. We don't even know what that would be. We're not going to know from year to year. Well, and I thought, and correct me if I'm wrong, Gretchen, but again, it is the issue that the county cannot uh, incur uh, any sort of debt, right? And so that's, that's right. why I, my thought is to tie it to in the event that uh, well, there's the likelihood that the county could not incur a debt. Then it becomes not a lease. If either party can't get out of an agreement, then it no longer becomes a lease. It's essentially a transfer. With only one party able to get out of it, that being the tenant. It's one-sided completely. So that's why I'm pushing back. No. There's a complete different agenda item on the total transfer. But that's the end result. Okay, so I'm not understanding then the state's objection to the languages as proposed by the chairman here. So that's not my language, I believe it was council's list. Okay. Now, I'll, take, I'll, just, I'll take it, that's fine, go ahead. Chris, go. The, the existing language, <laughs> wherever it came from. 
The, the proposed language here, a renewal of this lease shall only come into being upon the mutual approval of such lease prior to July 1 of each fiscal year. Neither party shall be obligated hereby to give such approval. Parties agree, blah, blah, blah. What, what is, what's the objection? I guess it's just the objection is that the county is getting the same, getting knocked out, which I know you guys. Okay. Right. And, and yeah. you want an opt out because you, as a state, you have to have that, right? Right, right. And as a county. Political subdivision state. So right. I think part of the This is the state with the state. I mean, the thing is, yeah, we're an arm. I mean, just like DHS is an agency of the state, I mean, the county is just an extension of state government. So. I think yeah. part of the concern is one that, that these negotiations have taken quite a while and, and we get into um, <coughs> other issues of. You know, maybe the county hanging over DHS's head. That, that was a little bit of that concern was a little bit expressed to me. Well, I, I mean, I think at this point, it's, we move forward off of this. If, if DHS is absolutely going to say no, that this language doesn't pass legally what they're required, and we're saying we have to have the language as written to pass what's legally required. I mean, again, I don't know if that's where we get the DA and the AG's office together and, and we hammer that out, or maybe we ask a senator or a, a representative to do an AG opinion. I mean, there's all sorts of options there, but I mean, I think the language says what that language says in a different way. And I, I, I agree with Joe, we got to start moving this on. If DHS comes whenever this is on the commissioner's agenda and says we absolutely can't do with that, then we look at option B, which is uh, I don't know, a, a transfer with reversionary clause or something, but that, and that's when it becomes a deal breaker. At this point, it's not. I agree with you. Let's move forward with this language. Can I ask quickly, uh, Mike, are you... Is, are you I, think, I think it's right. I think Gretchen's right, but I, I would say that it ought, to, it ought to say either party can determine this lease uh, as of July 1 of any year by giving notice by April 1 of year. Yeah, pretty close. It's it pretty close. May first. May first. May first. Is it says mutual okay. approval. Right. But I'd say either party can terminate. I know state's not going to have a budget until the end of May anyway. That way, it's 90 days. Otherwise, I think she's right. We'll move forward. Yeah, yeah. I can express mm -hmm. to our bigger team that you guys you have to have that as well. Right. We got one for them. I'll give you this call. And then, so let's, let's move to the null and void language because it's just like. The only thing about the null board, I would say, is that, you know, I would just say, um, I can write it out, but uh, let me look at it. It's not funding. Either party may terminate this lease. Uh, and then another sentence before terminating, um, party, you know, who are terminating will uh, somehow get noticed. I'll do that in ball. Give those the other party and, and uh, evaluate options for <coughs> raising additional funds or, or finding other alternatives to the determination of the funding. What's the determination <coughs> of the funding that's not found? Notice will be given. 120 days is what you will have to okay. seek additional funding. We'll move from there. Okay. I mean, that gives you. Okay. Well, I'm not. We're well, not. Yeah, right, right, right. I mean, you know, that gives four months. Uh, yeah. uh, I offered some language previously. I'm sorry, I forget it. Well, okay, so it would read, in the event full and complete third party funding is not received as contemplated per the donor agreements, the donors and DHS shall have, and this was a point, that was point of contention, I acknowledge, 120 days in which to identify and transfer funds for the completion of the project to the <laughs> county in the event the funds are not transferred within the 120-day window, the lease may be terminated by either party. I, I modified that in part from what I had previously stated. And I would move that language. Second. Randy? Aye. 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 There, we took care of that. What happened? What did you vote for? 120-day extension for them to come up with the money in the event we don't have enough to cover. And, and then, I believe you said earlier and then well. either party may terminate. It's not a yeah. strict, it's over. Yeah. Okay. This is progress. Yes. Do you, do you have that, Matthew? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Are you sure you get my script afterwards? So we have that language. Oh. Okay. 
All right. Now, with regard to the items that are listed 1 through 13, that was DHS's language, which district never approved. I, 1 through 14, if I remember correctly, is what we, was in the version that we have previously said we would recommend to the commissioners. So there's no. I think the elevators were added because they weren't really identified at that point. Okay. So is there a motion to include items 1 through 14? The move. Second. And motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now we get to the language regarding the 160,000. Um, first paragraph, years 1 through 5, DHS's contributions will not exceed 160. Did I fairly get DHS's position there? No, I fairly covered our position. Yes. I mean, these are just. So is there a motion to accept that paragraph? Can I hear some comments? Yeah, I think I, I've got 100, my notes reject 160 for the first five years. I, right. Is the 3% new, is that part new? That's all the CPI. That's, that's all the CPI that we talked about last meeting. Okay, yeah, yeah. But is the 3% floor, is that that's part new? That's, that's new. That's new. Yeah, that's new. Okay. I can't really say without talking to the executive if they'll be okay with it or not. But okay, well, but I, I tell you what we can do. So, the 160 for five years is good. We know that. So, that's what we had talked about and I included in this. So, are you feeling good with the first paragraph? <coughs> motion to approve that first paragraph. Agreed. Okay. So moved or second. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now, we get to the language uh, with regard to the CPI, which DHS is aware we were discussing that. They were not aware of the 3% floor. However, is the committee good with that? If you are, then I would move approval of all the language having to do with the consumer price index for increasing DHS's cap years 6 through 25. And then if DHS has a problem, if this is recommended to the commissioners, I can take it up with them. So is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So you're going to check on that 3%. Yeah, I'll see that. The next one is the paragraph uh, where we're responsible for trash, lawn, maintenance, snow and ice removal, parking spaces, uh, etc. And then correction, somebody's going to have to help me. The lesser is responsible for maintaining the elevators, uh, required maintenance. Was that previously taken out or? I didn't take it out. It came back in one of the versions I thought. Did I take it out? I think you took it out. Okay. Because the elevator had now been readdressed. <coughs> item 14. Okay. So is the committee good with the removal of that last sentence? Lesser is responsible for maintaining the elevators. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The next of the new language, uh, in order for the county to try to have an idea where we might be on the hook financially, this item requires that DHS would provide us with a monthly update or the board a monthly update with regard to their expenditures towards the cap amount. John, that's possible. That's possible. Okay. That's possible. So, are you good? Yeah. DHS agrees okay. to provide monthly. Is the committee good with that? So, there's yeah. a motion to approve so that paragraph. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now, the next paragraph, beginning with notwithstanding, um, again, as I stated earlier when we kind of went over this, this is something that the committee didn't talk about in looking at this lease and the way it was previously written, uh, in the event the county did not have funds and DHS had reached their cap amount, the facility could not have been shut down uh, per the, the writing of the lease. So what I, what I attempted to do here was, in the event the county doesn't have the funds and DHS wants to continue to operate the shelter, they could go over the cap, purely permissive. There's no uh, requirement on DHS's part. Correct. Motion. And the, the comment was they can seek that funding anywhere. I just wanted to make sure. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, we don't, I, don't, I don't think we care where they get the funds. Right. Yeah. 
Right. May, may I just ask? Sure, sure. And I, I feel like I'm, I have David living in my head a little bit here. Um, can we put something to the extent uh, upon uh, documentation showing such? Or what is possible? I, I, I know what you, I mean. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's. Um, that because we're in the middle of that process right now with our budget evaluation team and getting ready to present a, a budget to the budget board and so um, so again I'm hearing David saying so what is going to prevent the county from saying oh man we don't have it sorry guys no, nothing. nothing to show nothing yeah. just look at the state same way the <laughs> trust is so. yeah it, it, I mean and again it's one of those things where yeah, well, yeah you have you yeah. have more revenue this year than he had last year, but then we could, and I'm just going to pull this out of the air, say the sheriff's office comes and says, yeah, but we need a 18 to 25% increase or something like that. Right. And the county has constitutional requirements that have to be funded by the others, and this would not be a constitutional requirement. So, so can I throw this out there? Isn't that what the mutual uh, opt-out is essentially to address? Uh, I, I feel like this paragraph is going to come uh, or not to receive very well. Is, is it possible to take this paragraph out and rely on the fact of the mutual opt-out? No, Joe explained what his intent was. His intent was for the lease not to fail if the county doesn't have funding. I, I, I have a thought, but I don't know how to address you all correctly, that I'm with DHS with property management. And I'm, I'm hearing that there's a, you know, the county would like to be able to know how much they would be on the hook for each year, the same way that DHS has identified the 160000 What if the county identified a cap? What if your cap was equal to the DHS cap, and if it exceeded both caps, then we have to go to the community to try to get what was needed uh, wait, 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 we did. Here's what I want to do. Here's what I'd like to do. This is my language. I would move adoption if it's if it's accepted by this committee and it goes into the recommended lease to the commissioners. Y'all can hash that out up there. I move the link. I, I, I want to do an amendment to the amendment. Okay. May or may not be friendly. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, a friendly member will. Um, and that would be to strike the first sentence starting with the word notwithstanding to the word funds, period, and then uh, leave the remaining language in the event county funding is not available. Okay. Where, are you doing this? Um, what page is it? All of it. The first sentence. Yeah. Uh, just strike the first sentence. That's Okay. Okay. Uh, it's not a friendly amendment. I don't know. I mean, if Miles will second it, that's, I, I, I won't. I mean, all it says is, in the event the fund is not there, the DHS recognizes the county funding might not be there. I mean, the state of the world. I don't know. Sure. Can I ask a question? Then? And this is strictly from my understanding. Is with with this paragraph in? I mean that kind of nullifies the cap. I mean, there's with that with that language, there's no reason for a cap. Oh no, what I think it does is it, it makes DHS be mindful of their expenses in order not to bust the cap and even the county doesn't have any money. Well, yeah, and I think we would be, but here again, I just I can I, I guess can you explain that? Uh, yeah, I explained it. If for some reason the county should not have funds or doesn't, let's say it costs two hundred fifty thousand dollars to operate operate that building in the first year, DHS would be one sixty. The county only has forty. Under, as I read it, and again not being a lawyer, uh, this place was shut down. All I'm doing is saying the county recognizes that if DHS wants to come to the table and provide the additional fifty, then we'll continue on. It, it's totally permissive on DHS's part. Of course, I'm not a lawyer. I, I'm not either. I, I'm just, I'm just trying to understand. There's the other point. Which one? The most is you rejected. But no, there was no second to my amendment to the amendment. So we're back to the point. My, my motion is to approve the, the paragraph 
beginning with notwithstanding, running through premises. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. So it passes. Okay, nothing in the next two paragraphs. Under improvements, the second paragraph, uh, less it should not be responsible for costs associated with improvements contemplated by the construction slash renovation for the work of <laughs> the premises. That was not added. That's always been in there, Joe. I just highlighted that, it. Back to what we were talking about yeah. earlier. Okay. Next page, the indentification section. I believe this came out originally at the request of DHS. Is that right, Gretchen? I'm Oh, I think, yeah, they didn't like yeah, the, the first. Right. I, I might clarify a little bit on the second one instead of saying each and put its own. So the parties agree each party will be solely responsible for the act and omission of its own party official employees rather than each. each. I move that amendment to the amendment. Okay, so the identification section, we're all, yeah. we were all on the same page there. We're good with striking the first, the stricken language on the liability. And with Gretchen's amendment to the new language, we'll take out the word each and we'll read omit, omissions of its own parties. Is there a motion? So move. Okay, second. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so now. This committee has approved all of the changes to the lease. Is there a motion with regard to the lease for a recommendation to the Board of County Commission? So Thank you. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. John, do you want um, to give me direction once I receive a cleaned up copy of the minutes to um, the intent? Is there a prior review or not? Yes, that would be excellent. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that takes care of item six. With this lease now at least being going to be recommended to the Board of County Commissioners, is there any action necessary on item five, which is the transfer? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to, I would propose, since this is moving to the decision maker, the ultimate decision maker level, that <clears throat> there may, and I would speculate that there will probably continue to be some lease term issues, just because I know there are ladders that this needs to go up still, and, and there's legal eyes that still have to look at it. So. I would propose, um, just for the sake of moving this forward, giving the commissioners all of the available options, which they have anyways, but right. you know, just from the perspective of this committee, I would move, um, I would move recommendation of transfer of the county-owned property. Which with is a reversionary right. clause? With a reversionary clause. Well, that's so that I, I move recommendation of transfer with a reversionary clause. What was that? Yeah. Well, so wouldn't, the, wouldn't the motion be first a recommendation that the board <coughs> make a finding that it is surplus and then? I mean, that's contemplated within what they would have to do to transfer anyway. Is that, I mean, I don't think they actually have to declare surplus like under the state surplus property. Um, the state says, or sorry, the statute says it's no longer needed for county purposes. It's been, well, it's been used as the DHS okay. shelter. So there's back. a motion. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, wait. Council oh. has something. Reversionary language? Mm -hmm. Are you going to suggest in the ordinary language such no. as um, so long it is used for its lawful activities because the Oklahoma General Justice Club? I mean, I think that's great language, but I'm not going to recommend it. Well, you said a reversionary clause that could be so long as it's in the red. It could be. The reversionary clause could be discussed at any point when it's presented to the OCC, correct? Okay, so there's a motion and a second. There were two in favor. I'm opposed. 
I don't think it's good business to not identify what the potential reversionary language is at this point. You can do this. So. Okay, so that takes care of item five. Item seven is the general catch-all item that deals with the repurposing of the shelter. And um, Gretchen has worked with uh, the Blumenthal's and has a draft of a grant agreement. I've brought copies for everyone. This would cover the additional 500000 It is... Oh, yeah. Thank you. And if I may, this is under simultaneous with um, the Blumenthal's to try to speed this along. So, uh, with, so I, I sent this with the caveat that there may be, the Blumenthal's may have uh, a change. Um, the only, I, I shot it to safety. To, to, the only things, I mean, it tracks very closely the Arnell agreement. I did. I think that um, it's, um, similarly, yeah, with, uh, with what we negotiated with the Arnell. I, I shot it to safety. Um, it, it's more on timing issues um, than anything. Um, the core costs. Um, what do you think? So core costs. Core costs. Trying to, trying to <laughs> be creative. Yeah. So anyway, um, I think at this point it's just informational purposes and an intent, not specifically for approval because we're not to that point yet. And this project forward. I would not want that to be something that you keep us from. Are you comfortable with the draft? Yeah. As you read. Yes. Okay. Are you comfortable with moving forward and recommend, recommending this uh, agreement to the board? Except, I would say this, on behalf of Blumenthal and Arnold, that we would once again recommend that you consider an advisory body. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to further my comment because this is the first meeting I've attended. And I can tell that the dealings in this are unsatisfactory. It looks like you guys make arbitrary decisions that are rushed. They're not effective and that you need a group that will put this together and move forward in a reasonable way that can oversee this and monitor it. And it doesn't look like a satisfactory process to me just based on my attendance at this particular meeting. Uh, and that's what I'm going to report to our Noel Family Foundation because this doesn't look like a satisfactory process to me and I, I think you guys act fairly arbitrarily based, you know, based on the documents that I'm looking before me and the way that you react to them. And this has been proposed by Jeff Davis. It seems to me it's a public-private partnership that isn't occurring I don't really like the way this is moving forward. Well, so you can go back and see that we don't rush and make arbitrary decisions. All of these meetings are available online. Right. Had you bothered to come, you would know that we've been over backwards. Now, I I have been trying. Well, sir, I, I, I speaking personally and hopefully for the committee, I don't appreciate that. That's not, it's uncalled for, it's not productive, it's not necessary. <coughs> we've all tried to work together to further the best interest of all of our parties. We represent the county or one third each of us. I think the suggestion, underlying suggestion, is a good one to be in in the event that we are going to move forward as a partnership in this project over the next year, uh, at least in the construction. And we will, and, and under the grant agreement, and the Arnold grant agreement, uh, we, they are, are able to designate a representative and we are, are to report back. So Correct. I think exploring how that would look is, is a good suggestion. Well, and sir, so you've been working like with Gretchen on this from the very beginning, even prior to this committee, I think, even being formed. And, and there was never any intent to ever shut out anyone from being able to come to the table and speak, and I don't think that has ever occurred. However, Gretchen has explained, and I believe Stacy has explained, that the county has certain legal processes that we must follow. And that's why we had to do the donor agreement, the money come into the county coffers, the county let the project, the county oversee the project. I don't think council's asking us to not follow the law, at least I hope not, because I don't see that we nor the board would, not, would go down that road. I mean, I think it's just a general statement on on the difficulty of the negotiations. I, I think moving forward, I think it's, it's a good suggestion of the parties coming together in 
And as you said, that's contemplated in the agreements, and I don't perceive that that would be an issue. So, again, I don't think those comments were appropriate. However, that's just my opinion. Is there any action necessary on the grant agreement other than to receive? I thought I heard Ms. Blumenthal say she was okay with it. If Gretchen's okay with it, I would move that we previously recommended the Arnell agreement or approved recommending that to the board. I would approve, I would move that we would send this one up to the board as well. Can we do that under the item that we have here, having not received, I didn't receive the document ahead of time. Well, we can, okay. Well, we can, well, I'll withdraw and make a motion to receive. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, if our counsel doesn't have any objections, Sarah, you're good? Uh, yes. Okay. I think we're on page seven. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You can receive it, but not approve it at this point, I think. And plus, I could give the Blumenthal a little bit more time to stay on refinance. I tell you what, then. We've received it. It doesn't necessarily have to come from us. It can go directly on the board's agenda. So, my suggestion would be, then, that when the board hears the recommendation on the Arnell agreement and the lease, that one of our three bosses put this donor agreement on at the same time. How's that? Fine? Okay. All right. So, that takes care of items five, six, and seven. Is there anything else with regard to the shelter under item seven? I think it's the general catch-all. Mom? No. Sir, do you have anything else? No. Do you have anything else? I don't think we have anything. Okay. Which meeting will that be going to? This Wednesday or next Wednesday? No, just give us two weeks. That way, I can work with Matthew to make sure that we get all the changes correct on the lease. I'll get it to Gretchen, and then we'll get it on the agenda. We're shooting for May 17th, a week and a half from now. Yes. And that's for all of the items? Two recommendations from this committee, the Arnell agreement, the lease, and then a stand-alone from one of the three members of the commission on the living bill. And potential transfer? Potential transfer, yes. What was that date? May 17th. 9 o'clock. So, that's next Wednesday. Right there. So, is the transfer... We can have it next. It's approved. The other three will just be... Correct. Okay. Anyone else have anything? Judge Davis, thank you for coming. I kind of occasionally think, what have I got us into? You know, but with the... You know, I appreciate everyone. You know, these are unique birds with the DHS and the county, and obviously, there's long-standing 25 years of history here. But, you know, this is the potential to really change how we're doing business for children and families in the future. Yes, ma'am. I think we'd all agree with you. Renee, thanks. Anybody else? Sorry. Thank you. Thank you for stepping up to the plate and helping this project move forward. All right. You're welcome. Since we can't publicly... I believe in it. We'll be soliciting all of you guys for the next round. We've got the start-up call. Have you seen how much money this guy makes? Good luck with that. Thank you. I'm here.
Yeah. Uh, that's a really great name. Uh, uh, no. Friend of yours, Randy? Uh, I don't know. Is there a coffee somewhere? Yeah, but clerk, would you like me to get a point? I'd be happy to. Yeah. 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 Move the next time. <laughs> okay. Call. Do you need to go? I'll be done in about 15 minutes, I hope. Just call me when you get close by. We're quicker. I'm sorry. No. My daughter's boyfriend is playing in the state golf tournament. She's freaking out because she's not there. I am four. Yeah, I am four. Uh, discuss with you possible action regarding a pay from staff on the TIP 2 projects. Uh, item A, annex roof replacement. Anything? Nothing new on A, B, or C. Instead, item D, exterior maintenance and lighting. Lighting has been shipped. We should receive things this week, and Dane is mobilizing to begin the installation once the lights arrive. You know, I can say one thing about facilities. They don't rush. But <laughs> 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 are they arbitrary? <laughs> okay. Item arbitrary and slow. Item <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I can't read. Item E is the night floor demo and the elevators. We've done quite a bit of the bait up there, and I think we're waiting on the, the labor department to approve our what we've done, the status. Yeah. And so as we can get them here and sign off, we can get our contractor in. So. That's right. Okay. Item F is the ninth floor repurposing. I would assume there's not much there, but no, we, we did a drawing on the space that District Two wants, and I think this board's already uh, uh, dealt with that. Can we be meeting with David Prater uh, and the Witness Center people this week to see about what they may or may not need for the additional space they want on the ninth floor. Okay. Item G is the lower jail roof. It is under construction. The contractor is down there today. Awesome. Item H, uh, jail fire notification system. There are three devices left. Three, 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 three devices. Three, three devices, three three devices three. left that Simplex uh, Grinnell has Thank to install. You. The device that I had was we were waiting on a PO from the sheriff's office for Simplex Grinnell to be able to engage the, the vendor to finish that up. I've asked for another extension till the end of June from the Department of Labor on our violation notice. I haven't received a response yet, but I hope they will approve that. Motion to accept. <coughs> Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, item number eight, discussion due and possible action uh, regarding the condition of plumbing at the jail. This is requested by uh, HR Health and Safety. Dan? Or Don or John is out sick today and he had he had this information on that. I don't know if Stacy if you have anything to now it's his presentation. I would request that you um, mm -hmm. table this item or, or strike this item and add it back to the agenda next time. Okay. Mm -hmm. to strike. Motion to strike. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there any new business? We can't measure motion. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh. citizens' participation. I think they've all spoken. Oh, wait, did <laughs> We have board comments? Okay. Yeah, Randy? Oh, yeah. What what? Those? Yeah, I, I wish that some of the individuals that were here previously were still present because uh, I agree with the chairman that Mr. Joseph's comments were inappropriate and not helpful. Whereas, I think that some sort of maybe citizens oversight committee that has stakeholders and things like that may be beneficial. Um, you know, certainly we're not going to be insulted into that. Uh, the work of this committee is not, and the decisions of this committee are not arbitrary. Uh, again, I understand that somebody who maybe is solely in the private sector does not completely understand what it takes to operate with the Open Meetings and Open Records Act. And again, I've been a part of the sausage making process. I know all of us have at this level and other levels. And yeah, it's frustrating and sometimes. But again, this committee has worked diligently. This committee has worked very hard, just like all of the county employees that I've uh, had the, the pleasure to work with. So uh, I found those comments, uh, well, they're, they're simply not true. And again, 
perspective is his reality, uh, but those aren't helpful. I, I hope that does not cloud um, our opinions and judgment as we move forward to consider what may be best, including that type of committee. But again, I found those very unhelpful and uh, offensive as well. And I intend to speak to Mr. Joseph individually about that. Otherwise, it's great to be back. Happy Monday. <laughs> Hi, Miles. Hi. Again, I'll just say I, I made my public comments directly to Mr. Joseph, and if I have the opportunity, I or my boss will reiterate those to him. Gretchen, thank you for all of your work. I, well, I've enjoyed you, so. working with you on this. You worked very hard on this. Okay, move to adjourn. <coughs> Motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.